What is going on, everybody? Minus here, and uh, this is our little pre-show we do before we start up. About five minutes, so if you're watching on demand, it's going to be uh, pretty much four minutes exactly, right from now. You can skip ahead to get to the start of the show, um, but for those of you joining early, welcome. Um, we're just kind of chilling here, making sure we're all ready for the show, and we'll start right at nine o'clock. If you haven't seen the show before, thanks for coming, but on top of that, you can actually join our Discord, and I should start that up, and that's, see, that's another reason... It's really important to do the pre-show, Micah, because um, if I don't, I will forget things. I don't know where that's going to come up on my screen. I'll tell you, the, the Streamlabs chatbot is one of the longest loading programs I've ever experienced in my life. I could probably get into a game, logged in into my character before Streamlabs chatbot <laughs> loads up. Like, what could possibly be going on with that? All right. What's up, Schlocky? He said you can. That's great. All right, guys. So like I said, about three minutes. Mike, are you ready for tonight? It's been a bit. I know, and I am totally ready. You were the innovator of us figuring out how to work this show with uh, video. I was? Yeah. That, remember the first night we were like, because before it was just the show and it was my guest was on voice and then we'd bring people in, but we're like, Hey, let's try to figure it out. Me and you were like, Oh, this will be easy. Remember we tried yeah. like Google hangouts and we tried Skype was messing up like crazy. There were just tons of stuff we were trying to do. Yeah. Cause I think we were doing it last minute too. Like, like, oh, of course, like half hour or 45 minutes before it began. <laughs> yeah. We're like 45 minutes should be enough. And then it was a disaster. So yeah. <laughs> what is up or How are you? Welcome. The chatbot is working, so if you guys have not joined our Discord and you'd like to be on the show live, here you go. That's our Discord link. You can also uh, hit, there's a there's a few different commands we have in here. We have pledge. That'll tell you how to get to the pledge page for Pantheon Rise and Fallen. Um, you can hit exclamation point command, and that's wrong. It's actually exclamation point commands. <laughs> that will tell you the different commands. So we have a Discord, we have Pledge, that's for um, for Pantheon. Um, we also have Poll. We don't have a Poll tonight, so don't worry about that. But every once in a while, we'll do a Poll. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, some links for Defend the Night and some links for Valor, some different games that we've supported. So what's up, Foxy? How are you? And uh, Hilker, thank you for the, the Twitch Prime subscription. Early. Thanks, buddy. Uh, or Six said, just, done, just got done playing WoW. He's been playing WoW for like three days. Honestly, Micah, three days he's been playing WoW straight. I am actually, I've actually been looking at Shadowlands, and I'm not sure mm. if I want to give that a try or not. It's an interesting topic. I am avoiding it like the plague because everything I hear about Shadowlands is super positive. So I'm avoiding it in every way that I can. Yeah, well, everything you heard about Battle for Azeroth is also super positive. <laughs> yeah, but I beta tested that, so I knew some of that was BS. So. Yeah. Well, and that, that, that's why I'm not, that's why I'm skeptical. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, everything is like battle of Azeroth is going to be like the, like it's going to reinvent. Wow. And make it great again. And it blah, 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 blah. And then it, make wow. Great again. Yeah. <laughs> and then it came out and everybody rampaged. I didn't hate it, but it was just such a departure. You know, I think when you hit a pinnacle like they did in Legion and then you take everything out that was good about it, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> I don't care what you invent. Keep some of it. What's up, Theric? How are you? All right, guys, we are going to get started. It is nine o'clock. I'm ready to go. Micah, are you ready to go? I am ready. All right, here we go. Oh, we're, we're live? We're, we're streaming right now? Cool. Awesome, man. Let me just... Uh... What's going on, everybody? Mine is here from Pantheon Plus, and tonight we are doing episode 30. That's like a special show, Micah, that you get to be a part of. It, I there's, know. There's really no fanfare. Like, I don't have any, yeah. like, explosions to put up on the screen or balloons or and anything. And remember what we discovered yesterday. Yes, yes. So, yeah, <laughs> let's, let's, before we even get... Micah and myself discovered yesterday that this is no joke. Tomorrow is a year exactly to the day 
that I contacted Micah when we were doing Pantheon Plus and doing the webpage. And I was like, hey, I saw your stuff and I'd really like to put it on our page and, and show off some of your stuff and help you get some views and anything we do for you. Like we have a really good community. And it's really funny because we just discovered last night that it was le- like tomorrow's legitimately a year. And that was before we planned on like we, we planned the co-hosting before that. We just kind of figured it out. It's kind of crazy. Does it feel like a year? Not really. Time's gone by really fast. Yeah, it has really gone by fast. But it was interesting because <laughs> we were reading like the first messages we ever said to one another. And it couldn't be more perfect. The first one was like, I, was, I think it was like, and I'm paraphrasing, but. Hey, Micah, my name's Minus. Do you have time to talk? And his first thing he said to me was, yeah, I'm just finishing up watering some of my plants and getting my plants ready. And uh, I will definitely be uh, able to talk here in a minute. So that's funny. So number one thing he talked to me about was his plants, which you can see in the background there. And then the number two thing that he talked to me about was, um, or no, that I said, I said, well, first and foremost, (laughs) it was literally right there in the chat, first and foremost. And then I explained everything. So I just got a good kick out of that because as long as a year is, some things never change. So. <laughs> oh, oh, though, now, what we should do is we should check that again to see if I said, to be fair, anywhere. <laughs> because I said, my well, to be fair. Nice. I say that constantly, too. Nice. Oh, we got some people drinking. I, I upgraded a little. I'm not drinking the Michelob Ultra. I got some Blue Moon rocking. So that's my drink tonight. Mike has got the mystery cup, so I got tea. I always have tea. I throw something in that. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so uh, everybody, thank you for coming to the show tonight, episode 30. Um, and I'm excited for this one because we're going to be talking about uh, support classes and why that's important. We're going to jump all over the spectrum. We're going to talk about um, support classes in other games. We're going to talk about what we'd like to see from support classes. We're going to talk about where have support classes been all these years. And, and why support classes are important to the game in general. Like, why is it important um, to have support classes? So um, if you haven't been on the show before, please, uh, exclamation point Discord, we'll get you a link to our Discord. You can jump into our green room. And I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the support classes. We can talk Bard. We can talk other games. We can talk Enchanter. Um, but Micah, I think that um, you have not experienced the whiteboard yet. And I think tonight... Yep. Tonight's a whiteboard night. So let's go ahead and jump over to the whiteboard, guys. And uh, the way the whiteboard works is we're going to put comments up all over here. You guys are going to have the opportunity in chat to come up with some good comments, fears, whatever you want, single words, sentences, (laughs) whatever you need to define our topic. And you want it up on the board to really be a point that's important about support roles. So um, let's go ahead and, Micah, we'll both put some thoughts up on the board before we jump into the green room. And like I said, please jump into the green room. We have some spots there. We'd love to have you guys in. Um, Support roles. I'll start and I'll say that to me, I feel like I I didn't play a lot of Final Fantasy 11 and you're going to give us some insight there, which I think is important. But since EverQuest, I don't feel like there's been a tremendous amount of games that have a pure support role. And I think that the support role is really important for a lot of reasons. Um, first, I think it allows the developer to create more difficult content and put you in stickier situations because you have this class that can sort of handle, you know, organization in a sense. It's like a forced organization. Um, it can help everybody be stronger. It can subdue mobs. Um, and I think that that's really important. And it's strange that you haven't seen, like we haven't seen a real enchanter class since EQ one. And that's just shocking to me. Um, I know you didn't play a ton of EQ, but it's it was a hugely important class. People loved it. The memories that if, if you played an enchanter or you played with an enchanter, I mean, those are memories and they're huge memories like, oh, my gosh, clarity, you know, Mez, all this different stuff they did. And then nobody ever copied it. What, I mean, why do you think that is? Do you think it's because they they couldn't work it into the game design because it was so different do you think they didn't want to make a class that was really needed? I mean, like what what made it so these all these games just stopped with these classes like this? What do you think? Well, actually, that does sound a lot like Bard in Final Fantasy XI because um, that was such a tremendously important role. But I just think that um, the battle systems have changed so much. And, I mean, 
it's like there it's like it's got to be go 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 <laughs> yeah and so and that doesn't really coincide with you know like i'll hold these mobs over here guys will you take care of them too you know yeah so it's it's interesting too because i think there's a lot of things that tie into it too is with downtime going away you know support helped get through downtime quicker so it's funny because having a support back in the day would push content faster um but instead they just decided that like a lot of those benefits like clarity and and natural health and mana regeneration and stuff like that was just going to be baked into the game and i'm thinking a lot of wow obviously um but it's funny though because even though there weren't pure support classes in wow when the game launched and people who were playing classic you know, tell us in the chat but there were um there were a lot of support abilities at least like rooting was important slowing was important um there were different things you could do and then as the game continued to evolve they just took it all away if, if like you said the game was let's move so fast that if you're like, hey, I'll root this guy. No, 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 pull it all in. We'll AOE it. And I think that really what became in the modern MMORPG of this AOEing down mobs and and not having to break, um, geez, even like I would even consider pulling. Like you brought up pulling with bards and can give some insight into that. But I even think about like what pulling meant in EQ where someone would go up, they'd be very careful, they'd bring a mob back and you'd hold it away from p pats and you'd kill it and then you'd like scout. That was even gone. You couldn't even do that in a lot of the modern MMORPGs. Yeah, now it's all as fast as you can kill. Just <laughs> go, go, go. <clears throat> and that does take something away. Yeah, yeah. It takes a so, lot away, actually. So let's talk... Um, and, and again, please um, let people know what it was like to actually let me toss it over to you for a second. Just tell me a little bit. I mean, I didn't get to play a lot of Final Fantasy 11. I think there's probably people in chat who have. So what was it like playing Final Fantasy 11? Um, and the, the main class there was um, Bard, I believe, right? You said was the main support class. So yeah. what was it like being a Bard? What was it like being a Bard solo? And what was it like being a Bard in a group? Well, Bard solo pretty much didn't really exist too much because you didn't have a lot of abilities to, I mean, it depended on your subclass, but you didn't have a lot of abilities to do a whole lot um, outside of your songs. Um, they did have some dagger skill, I believe, but I mean, just nothing really too substantial. Yeah. But I mean, so playing Bard, you're pretty much with your party and... <clears throat> you were highly sought after. Like when I was playing Bard, I always, I had to put myself on, uh, I had to hide myself so I couldn't get tells or anything like that Jeez. because people were constantly like, hey, you know, do you want to do a leveling party? Do you want a merit party? Do you want to go do this? Do you want to go do that? But yeah, you would, <clears throat> you would run out, you would grab mobs, you would pull them, you would sleep them. So they were sitting there and they were ready for the party um, when they, you know, finished fighting where they, they were fighting. And you could pull groups, like if you accidentally linked something, you could keep those under control. You could you like, you like give people like a mana regeneration, a tactical point regeneration. Oh, um, you could haste them. You could you could slow mobs. You could give them a dot. You can, I mean, you could pretty much do almost anything with Bard, and it was amazing. Like we would take Bard into, I'd take Bard into Dynamis all the time to do polling, and. Yeah, you could just, I mean, you could, it, it was, it it made battle much, it, it created a nice pace to battle okay. because you could literally like just line those mobs up and just have the tank grab them as they were needed. See, that's awesome. And I think that that's what a lot of people, when you think about like games where you camp in a spot, um, you know, camping in a spot when you have a puller or a support class like that, it means that you can keep the flow coming. I think a lot of people think camping is just sitting and waiting for stuff to spawn. Sure, you break a spawn so that you have a place to sit, right? Like you want to break it so things spawn in a certain order. But then at the same time, from there, you're going to have downtime. And in that downtime, you have the healer sitting and you have the tank kind of wandering the perimeter and you have this puller or scout is what I like to call it, kind of going out and looking like, what can I bring back to this area? What can I bring back to keep our flow going, keep the experience going, keep the drops going? And when you got really creative in like EverQuest, for example, you could find a place to sit where you could possibly camp two boss spawns. 
Like if you were smart enough, like we're going to sit in this hallway, we're going to clear this room and then immediately clear this room on the right. And if we can keep the pace, we can camp both these areas waiting for rare spawns. And I always thought that that was really cool. And, and you can't do that without support. You really can't. Um, and I love what you were talking about with the bard. The bard reminds me a lot of like a combination of a monk and an enchanter, to be honest, the way that you're explaining it. That's probably how I'd relate it to, to um, you know, EverQuest in a sense. So, um, so let's, let's talk about Pantheon for a second here, because I do want to get into enchanters and bards. Enchanters we know a lot about, bards we know very little about, unfortunately. Um, but the interesting part, Mike, I'm sure you've seen, if you go through any of the abilities on the website or any of the classes, I'm sorry, I mean, almost every single one of them is listed as support. Um, yeah, you know, the, that. <laughs> the difference between what I'd like to call the pure support um, is that they also have a lot of control and they're made for group play, sort of what you were saying. Now, before we jump into those classes, I'm very curious. Were bards, even though they were so sought after, which you, like you were saying, number one, I imagine they were harder to level. Is that true? Or They were actually one of the fastest to level because oh, wow. you were never hurting for a party. You <laughs> okay. always have people asking you for a leveling party. <laughs> but if you couldn't find a party, you couldn't really do anything, right? Yeah, you kind of were SOL, yeah. Now, did you add a lot of damage when you were a bard in Final Fantasy XI, or did you kind of just, was it really about making everybody better? It was really about making everybody better. I mean, you contributed damage by hasting the melee, hasting the ranged, by increasing magic power, by increasing, like, give a mana re refresh so um, casters can constantly cast, stuff like that. Okay, awesome. So, and that's what I think... I think that's the big thing that maybe we haven't seen peer support classes in the modern MMORPG because it is a, not a selfish class. It's really not. It's you don't sit there saying I'm a badass. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you were a really good uh, bard or enchanter in EQ, and I'm sure if you were a really good bard in, in Final Fantasy 11, there was, it was noticeable, you know, because everybody felt super powerful. Right. Um, yeah. but you never, you know, it, it was about being a, part and, and enhancing everybody and being like, like you said, oh my God, thank God we have this bard. You're not going to show up on DPS meters. You're not going to show up on leaderboards, but everyone understands your value. And I think that's massively important. So, Yeah. In 11, you always knew a bard was a good bard if they were constantly doing something. You'd always have those people who'd be like, bard is boring because you just stand there half the time. And it's like, well, then you're not playing bard correctly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So... Now, and it's interesting because I, I saw Bronson say up there, um, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing this, but something along the lines of easy mode, I think he said. Um, I think that's what he said. Um, but And it's funny because if you're good at support class, yeah, you can make things a lot easier. But at the same time, if you, it's not something everybody is going to be... In this era of leaderboards and DPS meters, I think there's a lot of people that won't play it. And it's funny because we have both, Micah, you did and I did, we both did an Enchanter video um, that we've put on our pages already. And one of the things I said in our video, and this was a long time ago, it was actually the, and here's the funny part, people are so interested in these classes, by the way, um, that that was our first 1,000 view video was Enchanter, which was kind of funny to me. And one of the things I said in that video was, well, I don't think you're going to see a ton of people playing Enchanters. Now, let me clarify that. I think you'll see a lot of people making enchanters. But I think, and don't get me wrong, we have a very old school crowd playing this game that played the hard games. So maybe they know better. But I think with the influx of people that are going to come into Pantheon when the game launches, that I don't think you're going to have a lot of people who do want that selfish role, right? As a healer, I'm keeping you all alive. I'm top on the healing meter, blah, 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 right? As a tank, I'm in control of the group. I control our pace. I control our tanking. I tell you what to kill. And as a DPS, well, look at my deeps, right? As an enchanter or as a support class for that modern era gamer, all they're going to say is, well, we lived. And it's funny because back in the day, that was what was important. Killing the enemy you were fighting was most important. Now, you, in some of the modern MMORPGs, you down a boss, everybody gets loot, and there's one guy like, oh, I can't believe how low your DPS was. We freaking killed the boss. Like, that's what matters. That was the goal. So it's kind of funny. Um, and it says here, as Alar said, the subreddit quiz um, with a thousand entries, it has it as the most picked class. Again, 
we are all super hardcore, right, Micah? Like we, the people following Pantheon for years at this point, we are really hardcore players. We are much more likely to play tanks, cleric, healers, oops, <laughs> to play healers. <laughs> Um, and to play CC, we're, we're the group that's going to play it, but don't forget guys, there's going to be an influx of the modern MMORG RPG player that tries this game and they'll be like, Oh, this seems cool. But I think you'll see them going back to more standard things they're comfortable with. That's just my thought. But yeah, um, Zalair said, yeah, that's the most picked class right now, but here's the thing too. So if everyone's getting in guilds and the communities are building, right. And everyone's like, Whoa, we're all going to be enchanters. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, because you're still gonna need because then you're gonna be right back to where you were. Like we need tanks, we need healers. Um, and I think you'll see people switch off of the role quite a bit when you see someone who has it down. I'm interested. I don't know. I think we'll have enough. Uh, we'll have enough to play the game. We'll have enough to um, you know, have the role filled. And I don't think that Enchanter is going to be a necessity. I think it's gonna be really nice to have one. I think it'll be really nice to have a bard. But because the game has built support into almost every class. Um, I think there's gonna be some interesting makeups. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it depends on how support really flows with the other course with other with the other classes as well. Because I mean, if it's just able to like say like a rogue, a rogue might be able to pull and might have the support abilities to like root an, an enemy in the ground. Um, till it's needed, like the bards in eleven would sleep them till they're needed. And then in it's EQ, still, the very similar thing was called mez, mesmerize. So okay. sleeping and mesmerize were the same thing. Okay, yeah. So I mean, here they're they're not good, but they're not going to have all those other uh, like buffs and debuffs and everything like that that makes a, and and may not have the ability to handle large crowds either. So it really depends on how the support on the other classes works as well. Yeah, and it's interesting because it seems like the support in other classes are a couple abilities like like rogue because I'm into rogue, you can um you can do like some sort of like sleeping type stuff actually. Um and sometimes you even sacrifice yourself to do like an AoE sleep. Um and then they think there's a single target sleep. So that's it. That's like when you think of a bard for support, that's that's the pretty much the end of it there. Um and then on top of that they can like um you know, throw a rope down and stuff like that, which is going to be it. I consider support more of an in combat role, like a peer support to me is in combat. The utility stuff I don't consider support. And I think there's a lot of wordplay between support and utility right now, honestly. So, um, but here's, so let, let's talk about the good and the bad. So let's add some words to the whiteboard. I'm going to start and then you can, you can tell me what you want to put up here. But for me, um, the biggest piece that I want to put in and I'm, uh, I'm already messing up here, but the biggest piece I want to put in is um, I think that having support allows developers um, to create more difficult encounters. Definitely. And, and I think that if I could spell right, that'd be sweet. Um, it's horrible. This actually shows people my inability to... Uh, Type and my inability to spell in this uh, whiteboard stuff. <laughs> but the first thing I would put up that it's really important to me is having support allows devs to create more difficult encounters. It it creates the need to use these abilities. And WoW had that with dungeons. There were dungeons where if you pulled the whole group, you would die back in the day. Now that's just the trend because nobody's using root. Nobody's using slow. Nobody's using sap. Um, you know, all these different abilities that were made to be able to let you skip content or stun things. So now you're building a whole game off that concept. And I think that having support, as I said, allows the devs to create more difficult encounters where that support is going to be required. Um, and that in, in Bronson just put a really, really good um, comment here. He said, support to me equals extra heals, debuffs, buffs, DPS, and unique abilities. Um, that's actually really good. So what would you, when you think of support, what do you think? What, what's a word or a phrase or something that's important that comes right to your mind when you think of support and, and, and its importance or it's, it's in existence for so long? <clears throat> for me, when I think of support, I think of like bringing order to chaos. Mm. Okay. Um, because you are managing those enemies and you are in like debuffing them and you are enhancing your, your, party members 
and you're kind of taking this chaotic battle and you're just you're kind of like sorting it and making it more like orderly so i threw up two there i think bring order to chaos is really good then you kind of the two words i think these are really important words for when it comes to um to a support class is that enhance and debuff mentality i think that's extraordinarily important like how much more damage do you add how much do you take away um all that type of stuff so it's pretty important so pretty shortly here we are going to jump into the green room it is wide open we have a few people in there so shepto will get to you and then old war will get to you but if you guys want to jump in the green room please jump in we would love to hear from you in there come talk to us about your experiences and support so i'll tell a quick story to me, it's really funny because it's it's not exactly what I'm saying, but it's the first thing that I think of when I think of support. Um, one of my best friends in high school played a high elf enchanter. And I remember we camped, and Micah, this might be a little lost night because it's EQ, but we camped right outside of the gnome city. And they had these little armored guards called Watchmen. Okay. And right outside their city, because they were very, there was a very tinkering race, you know, pretty common with gnomes. Um, but they had these huge like spiders, like these clockwork spiders that were right out in front of their city and they were, you know, normally passive. They wouldn't attack you. And then you had your guards that were kind of patrolling. Well, as an enchanter, I remember that an enchanter would sit and I, I will never forget this mob's name is Watchman Halve. I remember he would spend all day sitting outside of that city and he would either charm the guard and kill the clockwork spiders or vice versa, right? So he would, he like, if we were like, hey, you know, where are you at? Um, outside, Steam, I'm in Steam Fine Mountains. Of course you are, just killing gnomes. He was killing gnomes. Like, it seemed like for a year that guy was just killing gnomes and fighting out there and you know, getting the, the money drops and the experience that would come with it. But it was funny because he would do it by enchanting, um, you know, I'm sorry, charming um, a mob, making a fight another mob, and then just managing the fight and making sure it didn't get hit. He would add a little bit of DPS, but it would really just be about you know, controlling the situation, like you said, bringing order to the chaos. And it's funny because that's the number one, I think thing, I think, but that's also something I want to throw up on the board because this is actually a concern. Um, I'm all about bringing enchant classes back, but I'm gonna put this up here. I'm gonna change the color of it here in a second. Um, and I'm going to put concern. I am extremely concerned about charm. The power of in charm of the power of charm in EQ got to a very, very ridiculous level. And it is my number one concern for the enchanter class. And I'm sure there's enchanters out there that are like, what are you talking about? This is what we want. This is like what we need. It was so game breaking, Micah, that they could literally go in and kill mobs by themselves that should have never, ever been soloed because they would charm these ridiculously strong enemies and just make them fight each other and win. You know, buff up their enemy, keep it charmed. It was there was a danger to it. The charm could break, and then you're in trouble if you don't get that thing on quick. But I'm really afraid of how Pantheon handles it because I know a lot of enchanters out there right now are saying, "Oh, I can't wait to charm and charm farm and solo with charming." I really hope it's not a thing. I'm really nervous about that, Mike. I'm really nervous about that. Well, I think it depends on how it's handled. We had a class in Eleven that could do that called Beastmaster, and um, it was a good solo class. And you could do a lot with it, but I think they put restrictions on it. I, I can't remember how, because they've changed the class so much now. I can't remember how it used to be, but I think it's like you could only charm. I think they had like a, like a longer cooldown on the charm. Okay. So you couldn't just like charm and throw, charm and throw. Yeah. So. Well, the interesting thing here is that there is an ability and I'm just kind of reading from the website here, guys. I want to make sure I read it correctly, but you can, there's a, an epic ability that allows you to like charm it forever and that is it's called dire charm so you have charm and it's pretty basic i'm not going to read it but you basically can charm and there's an epic ability called dire charm where enchanters can evolve their charm ability into dire charm it is harder for your target to resist so easier to charm and has a chance of permanently enchanting your target that scares the hell out of me <laughs> because they shouldn't be an enchanter i don't know Enchanters out there, tell me if I'm wrong. Enchanters shouldn't be a pet class. And I feel like when the charm is that important, it becomes a pet class because I remember doing things like you would have a camp, right? Like not a crazy camp, but there'd be maybe four mobs. So you'd charm one and make it attack the others and they'd kill it. 
Well, now you've turned that camp into a three mob camp. It's a lot easier to handle, right? You may not get the experience from that mob dying, but now you've broken the camp easily. Now things will spawn in a more maintainable order. So there were just so many things that you could do that I just don't, I don't like. Yeah. So Bronson said as well, permanent charm will break when you die your zone. Yeah, of course. Um, so your thoughts on that? Is that too much? Is that? I mean, if you're not able to charm bosses and stuff like that, you know, I think <laughs> it's, I think it's fine. <laughs> Especially it, it also, it all depends too, if I'm, um, how much DPS power the enchanter has, because if they don't have a lot, they might just be using mobs as weapons yeah. sort of thing. So it, it depends. Yeah. It depends on their DPS power as well. Yeah, like what if, what if you just like charm say, a badass mob and all of a sudden he's tanking for your group? See, I hate that. I hate that. If the enemy is tanking for you, like in the tank sitting there, like, hi, like, I guess you guys don't need me. Like, that's the kind of thing that I worry about. I, I do want to say when it comes to enchanters, I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn on the fact that they charm because to me, that should be the bard who charms Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you think of bard as being that, that class Charming. that's going to seduce well, enchanter, the, the word enchanter, like I'm going to enchant you. It does make sense too. But. Yeah. So like, like when I first read that, I was like, what are they doing? Charming. That should be the bard. Cause yeah, I always just think of the bard as that suave charming yeah. type. So, so it, yeah. Shepto, I'm going to pull up um, Hoye here because he wants to talk about this specific thing. And then Shepto, we'll get to you right after. So, Mike, are you ready for our first guest of the night? We'll bring Hoye in to kind of talk about this exact topic that we're talking about right now. I think it's a, a good leeway. And then Shepto, we'll right. get to you immediately after. So uh, let's bring Hoye in. What's up, Hoye? How are you? Oh, no. He's like, bring me up and he's not even there. Sorry, sorry. I, I <laughs> muted my uh, headset there for a second. You're all good, man. So you you said that you had something on this exact topic, the, the concern for Charm's power. You're not coming through. You're muted again. Oh, we're losing Hoye. He has all these points to make. He's lighting up, but I can't Hello? hear him. There he is. Hi. Testing? Testing. There you are. I think he's, I think he's having problems. Hello? Yeah, can you, you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear uh, us? Shoot. My bad, man. It's getting all messed up here. Are you good? Um, there you go. Yeah, I'm good. Um, so, yeah, I played EQ2, and I think they did this uh, pretty well. Um, I don't know exactly how Pantheon is going to handle this, per se, but in EQ2, you had five con concentration slots, mm -hmm. and these were used for different things like buffs. Um, not every buff used a concentration slot, but, but some of them did. Um, so like you could have five of them and you could either buff everybody in your group or, uh, different things while well, your charm took three of those. So you had to really make a big decision there of, am I going to pick up a pet for a DPS, extra DPS or something like that? Or is it better to have, um, these buffs for my group? And it kind of worked out really nicely because if you had kind of a support heavy non melee or non DPS group build, you could, you know, you don't really have a whole lot that you can you know, as far as DPS buffs that you put on people. So you picked up a pet and it kind of helped for your uh, DPS. But if you had a lot of good DPS in your group, you didn't want a pet and you used your buff slots instead. That's interesting. I've never heard of that before because I, I didn't play a lot of EQ too. So you had to manage so certain abilities, not everything. You know, normally you just normally. use mana. But um, so <laughs> that's funny. Uh, Bronson says this information would be explained well in a VR Enchanter stream link. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> we'll see it. We just saw Shaman, maybe Enchanter soon. Um, that's actually really interesting. So certain abilities, it almost had, you know, and, and we've seen this in a lot of different classes. In, in WoW, for example, Paladins for a while had um, like holy points. And there are certain abilities you can only use with your holy points. Um, that one came to mind immediately. And, and you, with Rogues in the same game, you had, act, you had like your combo points and you had to use those to do just different abilities. That's pretty interesting to think that you had a certain level of concentration you could maintain and that charm would take a lot of that and take away from some of the abilities you could use. It's interesting. I've never heard them bring any of that up, so I don't know how likely it is we'll hear that because have they announced a secondary power set for Enchanter? I think they just use mana, right? I think so. Yeah, just mana. Because a lot of different classes in this yeah. game actually are, you know, like mana in this or, or you know... um you know, you have 
I don't know, different resources that you get. Like they just announced that Bard, their rogues are going to have the extra resource for like sneaking and stuff. So, yeah. And they're also doing a lot of, uh, specialty kind of, um, combo point type stuff like the battle points for, um, warrior and uh chakra for the gates for the monk and stuff so i could see them adding something on for the enchanter i'm gonna add that as a suggestion on the whiteboard suggestion okay. um so what so you're a tank um give me your perspective on support classes we haven't had them for a while you played eq so you did have some there but what's it been like playing games without a support why do you think games haven't had a support for so long and it's what do you want to see from them it's like Micah said, um, everything is just so damn fast. There's no time for support, you know? Um, it, I like support classes. Um, I don't like when support classes end up being the top DPS or, you know, they literally are just there for um, just a buff bot, you know? You just have them in the group. They throw on group buffs and away they go, you know? That's it. Um, I think they there needs to be a really strong balance there of, I think there needs to be a, a very strong, noticeable difference in either survivability or DPS or something like that. Um, obviously, um, mezzing and crowd control is a, is a huge thing, and you can definitely notice that when it's there. Um, but also, stuff just like buffs and whatnot. I see EQ2, we had uh, bards there, and they certainly helped. They gave buffs and whatnot, but sometimes I was kind of questioning. I was like, this bar doesn't do, you know, half the DPS I do. Um, I wonder if it would just be better just to have another mm. DPS, you know, in there. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I don't think it probably was that be uh, better to have another DPS, but sometimes it was kind of questionable. And I think it should be a very strong, noticeable difference of, oh, hell yeah, we got a bar. Oh, hell yeah, we got, you know, a chan or, you know, something like that. You should really be able to feel it, you know. Not just, you know, oh, yeah, I get an extra buff. I get two more crit percent, you know. So, yeah, I like that. But I think it really needs to have an impact. That's important. Michael, what are your thoughts? You said it was really impactful in 11, right? It could be, yeah, if the bar is good. Because you could give everybody individual buffs. Yeah. So, oh, so you had individual really plus. Okay. And it's interesting because if you've if you've watched any of the VR discussions and we got a little bit on our Joppa interview about like bards and enchanters and why they're different. And it was interesting because like a bard, for example, will what he was saying is going to, you know, enhance people in the group. A bard is going to be singing songs. It's really going to be about enhancing your group where an enchanter might be about, you know, the enemy more like you're going to have things that will help you. But we're going to we're going to depreciate the enemy quite a bit. And then things like the like the shaman, and I think the shaman is the untapped support class. I really do believe this. And shaman out there who want to be main healers are probably thinking to themselves, like I'll bring you back in, Oye. Um, healers that are thinking uh, thinking to themselves, like I want to be a shaman. And to me, you know, shaman's going to be the best healer. I really think that if bard doesn't make it, and you're always like, well, we only have this one true support class. I really do think shaman is going to be the the fill in. You're going to have a shaman or enchanter as the pure support because I do think all the debuffing that a shaman does is very support like. And I think that that's going to be a big deal. And yes, they can heal, but I think a pure support shaman is going to fit into this quite a bit. And we, that's not so. talked about. Yeah, right. I so, think they're going to be very, uh, very useful for raids, I think, with their debuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because like when we look at the um, the Enchanter, for example, you know, they have the ability to put like they're going to have a passive ability where they absorb a little damage. So that's nice because I think they'll probably also pull a lot of threat like when a Mez breaks or um, like a charm breaks. I think you're going to see the enemies running for them. So it's going to be really important for a tank to grab that enemy or just somebody to CC it in place, things like that. You know, then there's a lot of like utility stuff like illusions and, and stuff like that. And giving mana back to the group is really important. Um, so it's, it's an interesting dynamic on what they are. They do have some damage stuff. They're going to be able to um, silence enemies that are casters, which is really helpful for pulling them in. One of the best things in the world when you have a caster, right? you guys have all been there trying to pull a caster. The group yeah. is just sitting back there. Especially like, in an open area where there's no way to like yeah, LOS it. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. Cause you're like, can, like somebody go around a corner, like pull this thing around a corner. But when you can silence, it's interesting. But the thing they're going to have is they're going to have the ability, like a shaman can um, slow attack speed like for someone who's meleeing, but they're going to have the ability. I think it's called curse of tongues. If I'm not mistaken, 
um, where they can slow the enemy's uh, casting time. I could be making that up, but I could have swore that that was something. Um, it might not be okay. called. Yeah, it might not be called Curse of Tongues, but they have something that can make it slower, I believe, for some of the cast. So. Um, anything else for support classes? Like, you're not going to play a support class, I'd imagine, because you're pretty tank heavy, but are you someone who's going to want a support class in your group? Yeah, uh, I mean, especially my goal is to be a main tank, so yeah, I'll definitely want some type of support in there. Probably um, survivability, whoever has the best survivability, probably. I feel like it's um, going to be Bard. Yeah, I, mean, I, do. I, feel, I feel like that, too. I think Enchanter is going to be more crowd control. Um, Necro, whenever they come out, is probably going to have some crowd control. And I think Bard's going to be a lot of survivability. Survive, survivability and um, DPS buffs, I think. Which, honestly, if, if you have really good DPS and you buff up DPS, it's kind of like survivability, yeah. right? If a fight doesn't yeah. take as long, it's... Yeah, cool. Awesome. All right, well, Hoye, thanks for jumping in, buddy. Appreciate it. So we added up your suggestion for concentration points. That's interesting. I like that a lot. And just the statement that support needs to feel important that you shouldn't like Micah, you were pretty clear in saying most of the time you knew when you had a bard, people wanted a bard, but it's interesting in EQ too. You were thinking to yourself, Oh yeah, well, is this bard really useful? Like their DPS is low. Like I'm hoping the class is strong enough that we shouldn't even care what their DPS is. Right. Like we should know right. like, wow, my DPS is X percent higher than it normally is. So I love this guy, you know, as a rogue, for example, like this bard's the best. Um, or you have a, a wizard who's like, I love all this mana I'm getting um, from, you know, from the enchanter. So that kind of stuff needs to be really impactful. It can't just be minuscule. It has to be important. It has to be important from the get go, because if these classes are going to level, they're going to need to be wanted in groups in early game. So a lot of these things can't be hidden behind leveling. And that's that's tricky. Yeah. And I think I think it'd be nice to see, uh, you know, your DPS meter and your bards all the way at the bottom and you don't give a shit just because of everything it brings <laughs> yeah, exactly like you don't even look at it because you're just like this bard is sweet well awesome Hoye. thank you for jumping in man and thanks for commenting on that Shepter, we're going to jump to you next uh have a good night oh yeah take care can i say two things real quick yeah of course uh though <laughs> when you brought up the breaking of the enchantment i just got a flashback of playing bard in final fantasy 11 when something wakes up and you try to sleep it, and you can't sleep it, so you're running in a circle trying <laughs> to sleep it again. What what Just happened in, in our gaming lives that when something is chasing us, we run in a circle? I, I don't know. <laughs> Why is that a thing? It doesn't so, usually matter. If you're running in a circle, you're usually getting hit, unless that thing's slow. <laughs> you're still getting hit. And then the tank's running around like, stop running, stop running. <laughs> so, but, but then it also shows like about how different the different mentality is right now when it comes to um, support classes. Because like Final Fantasy fourteen doesn't have a true support class. Mm -hmm. um, they have um, Bards, which has very weak songs. There's Dancer, which has some dance moves. Um, and I play a lot of Dancer in fourteen. And people never want to bring them because they're just like their DPS is so low and they never really take into consideration the way they buff the DPS of everybody else around them. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, so there's, there's, so there's still that mentality too of, you know, and I think that's a common thing where they just look at the, the one job. Isn't it funny? I love DPS meters. That's a whole nother topic. We've done a video on it. It's been debated heavily. I'm a big fan of DPS meters because I feel like they can teach you so much. Without them, your teaching would, you could still teach, but it's, it's just going to take so much longer. Um, so my opinion on the whole thing is like DPS meters have taught people that they don't know how to look at a support class. Everything's so measurable now. You know, we've found yeah. a way to take all the math of everything in an MMORPG and measure its effectiveness. And support is very tough to measure. Even healing is tough to measure because healing meter is the dumbest thing ever right like okay you're really good at spending mana but are you doing it in the right time like yeah you know how it's, it's like they might be over healing they yeah. don't know and that's on a separate meter nobody looks at that like oh i was number yeah. one in healing well you know 75 percent of your healing was over healing so but um but you know that's what's interesting about support and that's why i think that comment from hoye is very important that support needs to feel important if if, if the other members of the group can't feel it then we're going to have an issue. Like it needs to be like, wow, that was so much different having enchanter versus not having enchanter. And yeah, does that make an enchanter OP? Does it make it 
really wanted and desired. Sure. But is that a problem? I, I don't, I don't think that's a problem. And, and people also need to learn to read those meters differently and read them. Mm-hmm. Something. Cause like I said, in 14, like the dancer contributes a lot to DPS by buffing certain mm-hmm. classes to do, I think it's like, I want to say they do like, 10% more or something, something like that. What if there was a way and, to, to make the combat logs filter it into the enchanter's DPS, all the extra see, damage done, put it into the enchanter. That would be amazing. And whoever actually writes that would be the hero <laughs> of the support class world. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. You're not kidding. People would really like DPS meters all of a sudden. How's the enchanter <laughs> number one in DPS? Because you guys are badass now. That's why that's funny. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and bring Shepto in. Shepto, sorry for um, pushing you back a little bit there, buddy, but thank you for waiting. So bring Shepto in. What's going on, Shepto? How are you? Oh, not too bad, guys. How are you tonight? Good, good. Sorry about the delay. Hoye was really excited to talk on that specific thing we were talking oh, about. So that's all right. Don't bother me any. <laughs> so in that. But so, no, like, uh, yeah, you guys are talking about, like, when I think of bards and enchanters or support classes, I think efficiency is kind of the way hmm. most people see them, right? They make your group much more efficient in what you can do um you, you guys said pacing right um you know when you're you're playing now they pull everything and you just aoe it down i don't enjoy that it's not fun to me um yeah. to do that it feels like you're you're just trying to get to the well, everybody's trying to get to the end but like do you even see anything getting to that yeah. end or whatever but uh yeah, I mean, bards are hard because playing a bard in EQ1, you twisted songs, <laughs> right? I don't know if they're going to continue that, although that is iconic. I think you said something about that minus one time. It's super but, iconic. Um, and it was, you know, it was, and, the funny part was, it was the only time in an MMORPG that it wasn't just your ability to play the class, but it was the power of the machine and your internet speed. <laughs> that yeah, actually, yeah. It, it actually mattered. Yeah. And, and the other thing, I mean, um, and you know, you're all right. Concerns charm. I, I, I know a lot of enchanters love that, but I cannot stand it. It feels just the game just breaks down when you see like an enchanter can basically break its own camp and it takes another group, an entire group, full group to break it. And it's like, come on, you know, I mean, and they have some abilities if you go and read, you know, everybody's read them that, you know, they have the abilities of it, but I think you need to tone it down. There was no scaling in EQ with with charm. It was like this: the the mob hit for exactly the way it hit you, yeah, right? Which is and ridiculous. Flurry, and it would do all that stuff when you had that. So it, you know, I it needs to be balanced a little. I don't mind them having it, mm-hmm. but it shouldn't be tanking, like you said, um, and things like that. But it it's yeah. I mean, bards were unique to me because you got something every level. In yeah. EQ one, I always found that fun because you always had to wait for other classes. Every four or five levels, you got spells, and Bard was something new every time. And you would be, even though you may not have used it, right? It might have been, you yeah, know, like a resistance corpse. or something. Yeah. yeah, 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 you know, or something. But but that's the other thing is it brings back statistics that we didn't, we haven't used in so long, right? Resistances, obviously, other classes have those, but you know, I would I would raid Vox, right? And you would sit there and punch the the dragon while you sang resist song clarity <laughs> you know and and that because you couldn't hold a weapon with a, with an instrument but is there uh, anything better in an mmorpg where because <laughs> we all do this right we all like at some point you think about it being like real and, and, and yeah. go with me here but like stepping back and thinking of that bard in a real sense like this bard is <laughs> punching a dragon <laughs> singing a song yeah yeah and that's like the like, drunk buddy your- you have all the time They're like ah that's <laughs> yeah. just bob yeah, and that, but but like Micah said, you know, even in, in eleven and even in EQ one, you knew the good bards, right? You yeah. knew the good enchanters because, you know, bards could lock down three mobs by basically mezzing and keeping the mezzes running or whatever you're doing, right? And in, mm-hmm. in that, and you're like, it just changes your group. I use the shaman example from the last uh, video, right? Yeah. They can go in and out of their uh, their pet can, right? It can be either corporeal or or that if you have an enchanter, maybe they don't need the mana regen for it being true. You know, uh, that, or I mean, even can... the combo, when I watched that right. video and Micah, you saw that, right. With like the way that they, they were regening mana in the fight. You can see it was much quicker because uh shaman, when their pet is in spirit form, they gain mana and HP at the same rate they do out of combat. Mm-hmm. So it was really interesting because you think to yourself, wow, look how quick they're gaining mana back. 
And then you think about, they have Cannibalize, which lets them just cannibalize their HP for mana. It's not called Cannibalize in this game. Um, but then they also, it's called Chrono Burn. And then think about having an Enchanter as well. Like that there, we're not even playing the game yet, but when we talked about support needs to feel important, I have a feeling that that Shaman is like, let's go. Because a Shaman, <laughs> every time they heal, is going to be is faster. They're casting faster. And what happens when you're casting faster? You're burning mana faster. So they're gaining a little bit independently, and then they're cannibalizing, but this Enchanter is also throwing mana at them. And I think that that, like when you start to see these combos in the classes, and I feel like it's meant they meant to do this, but you start to see these combos. You're like, wow, these two classes are just gonna work phenomenal. Yeah, and, and those and those two together are heavily debuff. You know, you mm -hmm. I mean, enchanters have a debuff to damage output. Uh, shamans have a slow, you know, statistical debuffs. I mean, you put those two together in a group, you're just astronomically more efficient. Right, because they're the, the enemies aren't doing half the stuff that they would normally do to you, or as much damage. Healers aren't spent, you know, or even the shaman healing can do both. It's just there's so much entwined in the in the things. Obviously, bards harder because we don't yeah. know as much, right? Yeah, yeah. And if they're gonna have, I mean, all the bard stuff was short term. You had to keep it running, you know, and and that. So uh, it was always yeah, a I think skill. They were what, you know? Maybe maybe ten seconds if you were lucky. It yeah, give you enough yeah. time to get. I think the the difference, Mike, it was funny because again, if you had lag, you couldn't do it. You legit couldn't do it with lag. Right. Yeah. But you would cast a spell, and it would have its little animation effect, and it would maybe be ten seconds. And they were like between ten and eight seconds. And you'd cast one, and then you have to cast the other one, cast the third one. And if your computer was really good, you could twist four songs. <laughs> and yep. if you were a bard that could twist four songs and keep those buffs up right before they fell off when you got back to the original one. You were a god. <laughs> like, yeah. And and meters are the problem now in the world today. Like, you know, people are going to go in and go, well, this bard's not doing any damage, you mm -hmm. know, or doing very little damage, right? But how much haste are you giving your party? How much spell, you know, whatever the abilities are. My, my interesting thing is the bards are jack of all trades in EQ, right? Yeah. They're predominantly crowd control in this as per what Joppa said. So, you know, how do they you know, move into that category. Cause before you could do crazy stuff. You could over haste people. You could, I mean, there were so many things that the bard had that, you know, added so much to that class later with AAs, they pulled right. Yeah. Um, early yeah. on, they didn't pull as much. Yeah. I usually monks, saw monks pulling early. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Which, you know, it, I want there to be like, you know, you can slow mobs with an enchanter, but the shaman's better at it. I like that, you know, yeah. that you can still use an enchanter to slow and not have a shaman. That's always a good thing because you can't always have the perfect group sometimes. So, you know, you have to build that that interdependency to make sure that it works right. But, yeah, I mean, Charm's the one that I worry about concern-wise. It still is. It, and, and I'm not a big fan of bard kiting. I don't know if you remember that, Minus. <laughs> oh, I do. Oh. Dude, I played like, a bard for quite a while. I, um, do you guys yeah. remember Kara Island? With yeah. All the cat? yeah. I, I, there was, I, Micah, there was an island full of cat people. And it was in the I middle mean, of nowhere. It was the yeah. strangest place in the whole game for these cat people. And it was before Lucklin, I think. Like these were cat people before you could be cat people. And it was just mm -hmm. it was really weird. It just existed. <laughs> the faction didn't matter. It was just you never went there for any reason, but you'd find this island. There's all these cat people. Have a civilization. They're nice to everybody. Well, as it turns out, you can kill them for tons of experience. You lose all your faction. But you could, as a bard, there was this huge area. I still remember it was like a big sand <laughs> area. And I'm not kidding you, Micah. I could run. I'd have my, I'd be interweaving my speed run song, my slow song and my damage spell. And the damage spell was horrible <laughs> for anyone who yeah. played a bard. Yeah. It was so little damage. And I would just have this train behind me of like 20 cats <laughs> just walking behind me real slow, just ticking really slow ticking damage. Slow, till and they as, all died. Yeah. And as long as I kept all four or there's only three in that sense, kept those three songs running you just see them slowly dying as they died. And when a new one would spawn, it would just get in and I'd literally be running in a circle. Yeah. I didn't, as much as I did that, I don't, I don't want to see that be a thing again. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't mind Druids kiting. I, I, that's kind of their, their thing and necros and, and that type yeah. of thing. And that game was always that their thing, but like you could level by yourself in that game as a support. I mean, you really were a support class. It kind of, I don't know. It just seems weird, right? You, when you, you brought up a really it. good, you brought up a really good point there. And I think it ties into what we were talking about. The, the concern of charm is that support should need a group. Yeah. 
because like Micah said in, in 11, right? It You said, Micah, it, you were you were pretty fast at leveling if you were a good bard, right? And yeah. people wanted you. So you shouldn't have to do that. We're playing a game where we're supposed to group with each other, right? And then you have <laughs> this ability that you basically don't have to, which yeah. I get some people want to play that way, and I'm not saying poo-poo on that, but, you know, it, they, they built certain certain things and that you should have to kind of group with people. Well, right? there's all in, these, in there's all these tenants that they built when they built Pantheon, right? Like Mike, I mm-hmm. think me and you have talked before. It was one of the big things that brought us into this game is these tenants and these core values that were going to make this game a little different. You can't, you can't just throw them away so that the engineer can solo. <laughs> yeah. Know? I mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed to them introducing a more solo centric class. Sure. But, but it's like keep the support support. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is, I mean, people found those ways cause they, you know, mm. they learn the abilities and that, and, and obviously we're going to have a lot more knowledge probably going into this game than we had in earlier MMOs. There wasn't as much testing back then, you know, leveling will be. I'm sure a lot of the things faster. that people figured out how to do in EQ, the developers like, Oh we didn't yeah. Think of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you know, but there are some things that they just should be a class that they are the selfless class and they yeah. should always be that way. Right. There are people that love that type of, of job. Right. And do they need to be in the group? No, I don't think they're requirements. They shouldn't be a requirement, but if you know someone that, that can make you more efficient or maybe change up your play style a little bit because you now have an enchanter or a bard in your group, whereas in before you didn't, that, that makes your class, your class even more unique, right? Because yeah. then you you basically get to play your character differently in, in different groups, right? And that makes it more fun because now you're not just doing the same thing over and over and over. So in that, which makes the game more fun, in my opinion. So you get to change it up. So that's actually yeah. really important. Mike, you, were you going to say something? That I saw you kind of smile and you were going to say something maybe or no? No, go ahead. Okay. So you you I put another thing up on the board from what you just said there, which is support is the selfless class. We're in a society. Let's yep. all look in the mirror for a minute. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pick someone random from chat. Um, Maltras, I'm not talking about you. Uh, Mikel, <laughs> I'm not talking about you or sick. Theric, Theric, maybe you, um, you are an elf. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> and maybe Micah, but um, at the end of the day, like we are a society that, is like all about me, 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 me. It's just what we are. Let, I can sit here till the day, until the end of time and say to myself, like, and I do really believe that I'm more about the group, but I will be competitive among friends to convince them to push harder and be like, dude, look at my deeps. What are you doing? Why are you number three? Like I crush you, man. Like I'll do that kind of stuff. And there's a part in my soul that's like, yes. <laughs> um, so, but, but support needs to be selfless. And, and I think that that is really important. Like when you pick support, there's a lot of people out there like that in the gaming world that want to be a part of something that want to be an enhancer that want to be a follower. That's their class. Don't change it for the selfish people. Don't yep. make this role that hasn't existed for a while. And in, in an important sense, don't make it for the DPS meter people. Don't make it for the min maxers. Make it for the player that wants to play an important role. And I think yep. that that's super important. And it may not be a big group. And I'm, like I said, not many people are that way, but you've got like, think of any game now that, that doesn't exist. Those people don't have a game that truly feels like they're part of what they want to do. There's parts of it, right? You get a little yeah. bit out of different classes, like you said, in classic wow, or, you know, just other EQ2. I mean, they all have different things, but they're never that, hey, I can sit here and just sing songs or cast, you know, buffs on people and, and that and, and make my group better and, and not have to worry so much about... May, maybe people aren't good at pressing buttons, right? But they're good at buffing and, and doing... And that's just And they have the good way. awareness. Maybe they have really good awareness, exactly. but they're not... Yeah. Yes. It's interesting, yeah. too, and, because I've always been a raid leader, and it's something I enjoy tremendously. I probably won't be in Pantheon, but it's just... I, I don't know about you, Micah, but I just love the complexity of a boss fight, especially with where they're at these days. Um, and as a raid leader, I've always felt that the easiest way to raid lead is as a range DPS. Mm-hmm. Um, because as a range DPS, I can see the fight more. Now, I want to be a tank, 
but if my face is up in the butt of an enemy, <laughs> it's kind of hard to see what's going on everywhere. Whereas a ranged DPS can, I feel like that you have the that raid leaders. This might be an amazing class for yeah. them to be sitting back, control, throw out why people are doing things, direct traffic. It's a phenomenal role to take some of that pressure because I don't know if you guys noticed, it always does seem to be the tank. Like tanks yeah. seem to lead a lot. And it's it's probably one of the worst positions to lead from. To be honest. <laughs> yep. You can't see anything. So you can't. You're like camera zoomed out. Yeah. Like, you know, because the mobs are always so big and, you know, yeah. and, and that and it's just, yeah, they usually play. I mean, not not to get onto WoW, but I mean, if you've watched any of the, the rating and, and the high end rating, right? I mean, now they don't even have one of the character people doesn't even raid in the group. They just call out stuff. Yep. Do you see that minus? And yeah. Yep. The last stuff like they don't even play the game. They're just there to call out stuff, which is insane. Kind of walking right? just, and they're coaching. I think it's called a coach, right? Mike yeah. Is what it is. Yeah. Like, like so, with, uh, method I mean, as and, a coach. And that's, yeah. Yeah. And that's just a di change in, in wow and the way it plays and how mm. difficult the fights are, but it doesn't need to come to that. I'm just saying that, you know, Pantheon. Yeah. You can, you can make that class be, be something that people want to play. Right. Not everybody wants to heal. Not everybody wants to tank. Not everybody wants to do DPS constantly. Right. So mm. I think that's a good, and it creates this, maybe you do want to play something different and it's a totally different experience when you play that class as compared to the other three in that Trinity. Right. So you just, you just have a different viewpoint and you have a different idea of what you, what you can do. And if you like people, you tend to get a lot of groups. So you get, <laughs> um, if you're a people person, that's a great class to play. Like Micah said in, in 11. So, um, yeah, you know, I was like, and, leave me alone. people. Yeah, Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like clerics going AFK and or anonymous and EQ one didn't want to res people. Uh -huh. um, I, I remember yeah, being a so. tank and just my whole friends list and why yeah. I was all healers. Yeah. Like my yeah. whole friends list. If I found a good healer, like uh, we can do whatever. If if we have a good tank and healer, we can get through with any DPS we find. Yep. Yep. So in that, but yeah, overall, guys, I think support is a very, very important part of Pantheon. I, I think it's it's one of the pillars that that they cannot change and go away from because I think it's just it makes the game more, like you said, more challenging. It adds pacing to the game that you're not just constantly pulling. It makes enemies single single enemies make them very very dangerous right yep. because if without crowd control then you just then they can't make stuff super super difficult right so because you can just pull it all so it, it makes the game it plays totally differently and and the pacing it's more like a chess match right yep. you're trying to figure figure out what to do how to pull it what to do when they come in if you get ads right being aware like you said minus being aware and of your your surroundings because you get an ad it needs to be locked down so um in that and then you yeah. yell at the tank or the DPS yep. that splash breaks the meds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then and then you be a jerk and you you know you basically uh, wipe its hate list. Um, so <laughs> you know, and, that, and then it just kills everybody. No. Um, How many so of you people that, in chat have frustratingly <laughs> wiped something's hate list so that it kills the DPS that broke your meds? <laughs> Go ahead and put uh, press F for to pay respect uh, to the people you killed. Many people have died to that that spell. Um, and I'm glad to see it coming back, obviously. So, uh, yeah, that, but th there's a lot of cool things. And I think, you know, the, the, the Bard is the one I'm, I'm interested to see how they go about it. Obviously with little information, um, how they create that yeah. class and, and all that. And it was just such a unique, I, I just was such a unique class. I've never seen anything like it. And I didn't play a lot of 11, Mike, so I don't know exactly how yeah. the Bard played in that one, but, um, but in that, but it was always so unique to play. So like you said, yeah, now we have better computers. So <laughs> yeah. not, not, not so I wouldn't, bad. I'm the, listen, I wouldn't be opposed to twisting being a thing again. I, really I wouldn't, wouldn't. My hands might, but I don't. Um, so yeah, I used to do it manually and a lot of people use the macro command, but. Oh uh, dude, I, was, I didn't start using hotkeys. So I was a clicker until wow. Yeah. Legion. Woo. I every MMO I played, I was a clicker until freaking <laughs> Wild wow Legion. And the only reason I'm not anymore is because Haya just obliterated <laughs> me, just completely ripping on me and just made me feel like the most garbage. He's like, what are you doing? How are you clicking? Don't get me yeah. wrong. I was performing. I was up on the meters. I was doing yeah. everything I needed to do. But it was the it was like retraining my brain. And that's why I have one of these. Like everybody's mm -hmm. like, well, why do you use that thing? But the Tataris <laughs> to me is my hotkeys. Because yep. if I use the keyboard, uh, uh, tell me in chat if you guys are like me, I get lost on the keyboard. Like if I use the WASD on the keyboard 
and I reach into like the numbers or like something like I don't always find my way back comfortably to WASD. <laughs> I, I don't like I don't like being able to have to use um WASD to move and then the numbers to do abilities. Yeah. I like I like the games where you can, I can use my mouse to move. Yeah. Okay. That's I nice. use mouse movement too, Micah. So I mean, I usually type things to my mouse now too. Back yeah, then, a lot yeah, of the didn't have multi-button mice. Yeah, back I have I have a twelve-button mouse, and then I have the Tataris. So a lot <laughs> of what I do is I use six buttons on this, and then I use this. This is my alt modifier right here, um, and I use that to alt modify my other six abilities. So I can do twelve abilities like easy, and then yeah. I have some reaching stuff. So. But it, it's funny you say that because, like, now thinking about being a bard with this setup, I'm like, let's go. Like, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Before that, I was I using mean, a two-button just... wheel, like a ball mouse. Like, <laughs> Yep, a ball mouse, the two buttons, three if you were lucky to have a, a wheel, you know, yeah. to press. But, yeah, I mean, that, that was always the fun part is, like, you know, being able to do that. And it lets you kind of, you know, change them on the fly if you needed to throw something else up you could you could change them and it just made it more fun it was a more active class right some yeah. classes are not very active i mean clerics and, and eq1 were not very active normally you stood up complete healed and you sat back down right um in that it's just some people need that the to press buttons right just have yeah. that be feel like they're engaged that's the word i'm looking you know what for, the worst part was though is i never locked my bars so when i clicked like if i was really heavy combat <laughs> like, i'd throw an ability off my bar completely. Ability. like oh crap that was taunt <laughs> Like yep. that's the worst. It was always yep. the worst ability. It wasn't yeah, something you course. didn't use. <laughs> yeah, it was always like you know something you needed right away, and then it's gone, and you're like, God damn it. So yeah, there, there's a lot of of things, but yeah, I didn't play as Enchanter as much, but yeah, the Bard was always a fun class to play, and and just showed so much uniqueness. And they wore plate it was a weird yeah. thing. Like it was very plate, weird. Dual wield. I mean, how it do was you just... use plate gloves and play a flute? Uh. A talent? I don't. I don't know. Uh, really in that, it's. Uh, I mean, you used to shove your flute through your neck or your sword <laughs> or whatever you used to do. So, I mean, you know, you you were a sword swallower as well. So, I guess that's something that they used to do and used to strum weird things. So, <laughs> I just you know, the, the graphics and all that was oh, always yeah. fun in that game. So, and the speed yeah. and and the, I mean, dropping people off because you know you had speed with levitate and then they get yeah. too far and fall to their death. <laughs> I mean, there were some great things in that game that you could torture people with. Um, I hope we have those little nuances that are just funny like that. Oh, That's yeah. Really I think I killed a friend of mine by they had a song where you would teleport random the people randomly into areas like around you. And I put them underwater and they died because they were AFK. <laughs> uh, it's just dumb things, you know, that she, that, that that spell had no purpose. It didn't do Other anything. Other than killing people. Yeah. yeah. That's why so, some of the know. support abilities and utility, utility abilities are actually really fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of games take away that fun, like illusions for enchanters. Like yeah. they're not. I can't wait I mean, until we're in Black Rose Keep and an enchant. Like we go around a corner and we're in trouble, and there's a pack come in, and an enchanter just thinks quick, and we all turn into chairs. Like, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. that's a moment. I mean, yeah, and they used it in EQ to do quests and stuff. If you're an enchanter, you know the Stein of Magok or whatever it was, right? And and different things, but like. You know, and wow, you get fun toys, but they never last long. And it's like they don't want you to have fun with it. I don't understand that. And like, if you want to turn Minus into an elf, you know, you can do that. And maybe he's not paying attention. I see you, um, I'm, Mike. I looked right at you and you just looked right <laughs> at the camera. like You know, so I, I think that stuff adds just fun and, and <laughs> hilarity to the game that you get when you're grouping and just sitting there talking and shooting the shit. So that that's, you know, I mean, I remember people turning themselves into ogres and you know, locking like doorways, locking doorways. Yeah. You know, just crazy things in those tiny rooms. So you had to be so much yeah. more creative to grief people back in the day. Oh, so much, <laughs> so much. I mean, there were so many ways to kill people and I mean, it was just ridiculous and you know, but I don't know. It just added, it's a weird thing. It adds to a game, right? That it's funny. Now you look back. Yeah. Maybe it's rose colored a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the amount of stuff you can do right in that game is just crazy. And, and, and I mean, obviously it's old and they didn't know people would screw with it that much. Right. So yeah. in that, but, but yeah, guys, I will shut up so you can get to other people. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, you, you had so. some awesome points here. Some of the stuff you brought up support should be selfless. Uh, support shouldn't need a group. Don't make them solo masters. We kind of all were talking about that. Mm -hmm. And that support is a pillar of success for Pantheon. I think it really is. It's, Yep. When we are going back to old school combat, that's going to be hard and challenging. These support classes should be a big part of that. And it should be a big part yep. of the design philosophy. So they have to be yep. good and they have to fulfill their role. 
Yeah, and my last thing, like I said, I don't want them to be a requirement. I don't think they need to be that, but you should feel comfortable bringing them, right? And, and knowing that they can enhance your group greater than a, a DPSer can be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the hard part. Yeah, they, the they, should be a, they shouldn't be a requirement, but they also shouldn't be a detriment. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And that's exactly what Mike has said. And that, that's really the hard part. That's a balancing act that, that you know... VR has to figure out and in that, but they should. Yeah, they're always a unique, fun, fun thing to, to watch people, especially good ones. You're like, holy crap, how did they do that? You know, and save your ass from certain death. So uh, <laughs> in that, but yeah, guys, no, I'm I'm done. But yeah, yeah, like I said, I think people uh, people really. Uh, I think we've been been hounding for something like it for a very very long time, and it's just you just don't get that itch to scratch in a lot of games, and it's just. Finally, it's one of the reasons I even came to this game was because they had enchanters and obviously possibly bards um, because I thought that added more of a ta tactical style of combat. Yeah. And I'm, I'm done with the fast pace, mash 46 buttons in a certain order to do, you know, in that I just want to sit. And if you thinking. don't, you fail. Like, that's the other thing. It yeah. wasn't just about how to do rotations. It was about if you didn't do it right, it was tuned to it. It was tuned to perfection mm -hmm. because you didn't have these support classes to get through these things. So the DPS had to make up for it. It was all right. And that's the problem. DPS has always been the gap sort of that happened when support went away. It wasn't mm -hmm. tanks. Tanks stayed exactly the same that they were. Healers stayed exactly the same that they were. So the, the mechanic of how do we get through this boss fight went from this intelligent design of how do we utilize support and everybody to, okay, we don't have support, but now the DPS has to do more damage. So if your yep. gear's better, you'll get through it. But if you don't have enough damage, you can't get through this phase. That wasn't, I mean, there were those moments in the past, but it, it, it started to overwrite everything. Everything was a damage check in a sense. Um, even yeah. if it had all the craziest mechanics in the world, you still had to get through certain phases in a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. And and they just had so many and like you could derail trains as a good enchanter or bard. I mean, you could do so many things in a you know with with that character in your group that it just it just made you you know feel feel important as, as a tank or a healer or even DPS. Right, you you serve a purpose in that group um, to help just just become more efficient and and knowing your class and that's the thing is this game should should make us want to know our classes deeper and more. It should take longer. So you actually know what you're doing. And when you get to those higher levels, instead of just being like, hey, I got to 80 or whatever level cap it is, right? And it, in a week, right? And nobody yeah. knows what they're doing. So yeah. that that's something that we all kind of want, I think, in that sense. It's like, I just, the pace. The pace is the big thing, guys. I, I, I know a lot of people don't like slow, but man, I'd I rather it. see the world. And, and enjoy each little I, part I've of I've experienced thing. the speed. I've experienced what it takes to be a Twitch rotation. I've experienced mm -hmm. what it means to min-max and every single second matters. And I've been able to accomplish that for the yeah. most part. So I'm yeah. done. I, I can do that. I know I can. Me saying I want it slower isn't because I can't do it. It's because I just want a more of a pace that allows me to bond with my group. So. And, and the other thing, I guess, and sorry, I keep going. But the other <laughs> thing is like in, in stuff is... Why, why is there trash? If you're just going to pull it all and just AOE it down, why is it there? It's just yeah. an annoyance. And you started to see in a lot of being... games, trash density just dropped like crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. Or they just use it to slow you down, right? Because it's just got to be there so you're not jumping from boss to boss and, you know, killing things and being done with a raid in, in 30 minutes because you just went through a, you know, in that. And, and they don't serve any purpose to be there, right? No. Uh, it just feels tacked on at least in my opinion so um yeah a lot a lot of lot, support adds a lot a bit like i said it is a pillar that people need to understand how how much it affects the entire game as a general um game so in that and then i'm done um, <laughs> <laughs> well chef so, though no honestly you've provided an awesome uh an awesome perspective on this and i really do appreciate it know that yeah you of course here guys, for a bit, so, so i appreciate it so We'll talk to you in uh, Wargo. We'll get to you next. So Shepto, thanks, man. You you filled our no board up quite a bit. We got we got well, more room though. Don't worry, guys. We got more I room. mean, there's plenty of other people with ideas, I'm sure. So <laughs> <laughs> take it easy, man. See you guys. All right. So we're gonna jump off with uh, Wargo. Anything to add from and there was a lot we talked about there. There was a lot we threw on the board, not to be cookie cutter, actually came from Schlocky in the chat. Um, you know, that that support just shouldn't be cookie cutter. Like they should have their own flavor, their own support. We added that on the board as well. I mean, what do you what do you think of what he's saying? Like, 
coming from Final Fantasy, hearing these stories about EverQuest, where we're going to be in Pantheon, what's the what's the connection you're seeing? Well, there's a lot of fun things like being able to mess with people. <laughs> that where I was a great thing. <laughs> um, but one thing that I heard him mention a couple times was having to pay attention. Yeah. And I think that should be key to support. Like you should just be like, okay, you know, sleep or mez, whatever it was, and just kind of be done with it. Like you have to pay attention to the debuffs. You have to, you have to kind of know what's going on. I think that's important. Don't oversimplify it. Yeah, like um, if you mez something and then you mez another target, you have to watch those timers. You need to know when you're going to recast them. You have to be able to watch your mana. You have to watch the group's mana. Yeah, and <clears> you yeah. have to like know when the buffs you give the group members fall off so you can redo those. And I mean, and that's one thing I really like about support classes is, I mean, you, you're you constantly busy. You're constantly doing something. And you're not just like hitting a button over and over again. You have all these things you have to look at. And it just... To me, that makes combat a lot more interesting. Yeah. To relate it to a sports metaphor, you know, you aren't the, you're not the cleanup hitter trying to hit a grand slam. You're the leadoff hitter trying to just get on base. Let's get a single. Let's be consistent. Let's do our job. You know, let's do our job. We're not going to be the superstar all the time. Now we'll have our moments, right? Like when that fight goes crazy and everyone thinks it's over and that enchanter or that bard pulls off something incredible to get everything back in control. Or as you said, bring order to the chaos. Um, you're gonna people gonna be like, "Damn, dude! Like that was awesome." But most yeah. of the time, you're gonna be in the background. If if you're doing your job really well, you're gonna be the drummer of the band. You keep in yep. pace. And I always I always liked it too when the party would wipe and you'd be the only one left, and you'd maybe you'd have enough like room to get and, and run that circle again. <laughs> But just like run that mob around while everybody gets up and reses and heals themselves up, and then you bring it back into the party. Yep. yep. You always felt like a hero. <laughs> right. All right. Let's grab Wargoat. We're bringing you in next. Then we're going to do Drac. What's up, Wargoat? How are you? Pretty good. How's everyone doing tonight? Doing real good, man. So, what are your thoughts on support? You're you've you were an old EQ player, and it's it's been a while, right, since we've had something like that. Oh, the memories. I. I to see my thing was um, I I always gave the love to my enchanters and my bards and especially in Final Fantasy 11 I I if I could hug a bard or an enchanter I would do it <laughs> <laughs> I he t- the what to say took uh took a lot of my uh took a lot of the wind out of my sails but yeah there's a particular thing I do love. Um, I would say, in general, support are uns- are the unsung heroes of any of any group. And uh, if they're not busy, there's something wrong. If they're in combat, direct combat, there's something wrong. <laughs> That's one thing about supports that should, you should never see: them standing around doing nothing, and them in combat. That is a uh, a key the key net would support they should be the they should always be yeah that's where you know you see a good mage and as Micah always says a good bard we will always be busy regardless of what game it is yeah it's kind of funny it's i keep thinking back to that Micah, as you say like i needed to like pretend i was offline because i just couldn't like if i needed to just do something for myself or do a bank run or I just couldn't handle all the towels. Like, hey, we're looking for a bard. Are you ready? Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel you on that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, I played a little bit of bard in love, and then I quickly changed because the request for bards were so insane. <laughs> yeah, bards and red mages. Like you, you oh. could not. You could not take. You could not be logged in for two minutes without the towels starting to come in. <laughs> I. On my on my quiet day, it took like less than five minutes. On a busy day, thirty seconds. Just in, not in. Sometimes, as soon as I'm logging in, I'm not even. I don't even see the game world yet. Yep. I was getting. Yep. <laughs> it's like logging into the the planes when you were getting killed, but instead your just chat was already blown up, and you missed five people's chat. Why aren't you responding to me? You didn't even see it. I didn't even get in the game yet. Yeah. yeah. 
Or, or better yet, oh God, when when the when voice chat first became a thing, as soon as I hopped in, hopped on on voice chat before I logged into the game, they're like, "Get your butt in the game now." We need you. Yeah, yeah, and that's another thing too, um, as how MMOs progressed and diverged from what they are now. The support role went away, and as you said before, the it was. It has become more of numbers of DPS. I should know. I played Ninja in fourteen as my main, and uh, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna say. And uh, and um, oh yes, there's a. And as you were saying, with when it comes to bard and and, and song twisting. As with Ninja in 14, you needed to have a good internet connection and a good computer to play that class. Because if not, oh, forget it. That job, you're pretty much. Nice. But anyway. Um, it's awesome. So, I mean, are you more leaning towards a bard or are you looking more as an enchanter? Or do you like the fact that every class has tiny bits of support? Now, don't get me wrong. Those aren't pure support classes. Don't get me wrong. But I'd, I'd rather see the support be the main the main focus when it comes to support not have so yes their own personal little buffs acquired from the classes but if you want that heavy punch you need a support yep. if you need if you need stuff like mana gen coming back faster you need that support okay. cool thank you sir oh. Borgoat, as always, we appreciate you hanging out and uh, coming on the show to chat with us. Uh, great stuff there with the always should be busy. I think that's important. And it's kind of yes. weird because we've talked about it being the drummer keeping the pace, but at the same time, it's a super rewarding um, background job, which is kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. Like to be a guitarist. Oh, oh God. You, you, you hear the love and admiration you get. I have not seen in my time when I was playing support classes, not one person give me any hate. And if they were, there there was something going on that. If you're a good support player, like, someone in the group will throw that person out before they go through you. Out. Yes. That, I, will, I, will, I will agree with that 100%. They will throw out the person that would make pitching a bitch about the, about the support before they toss the support out, which was always the best thing. That's funny. Theric just said they're the blue collar players. That's funny. All right. Um, Orgo, thanks very much, man. Thank you for sharing some of your experiences and throwing some words up there on the board. Appreciate it, man. Each you take care. Be safe. So it's interesting too, Micah, because the one thing I did want to say, there's been a little bit of confusion and I even got confused on the Joppa stream a little bit because he, um, Joppa brought up when we were talking about Bard and Necro, he talked about how like, you know, Enchanter's going to be support control and that Bards are going to be support control. And he said that Enchanter, that uh, Necro's, are going to have support. But when I, when I started talking about it more and I feel like this was missile, but he said, well, they're not, they're not support control. They're going to have just control like for themselves. Like it's going to help them a little bit. So there's a lot of people I've seen in chat and I meant to bring it up a little bit earlier that are saying, well, you know, Necro is going to be another one. They may have some, but I don't think they're going to be, they're going to be like control DPS. I don't think you're going to see them more as a support class personally. Like, Micah, what did you get from that? from kind of what you're seeing or hearing, I mean, very little right now of Necro. Do you think it aligns with that? I don't know. Cause I generally don't really know how Necromancers play in most games. Cause that's not a class I normally play. It's usually like um, life draining pet. Um, yeah. Fear. I always see them as pet classes just yeah. because I always think of them as having skeletons and zombies and everything more than anything. So and old war also just brought up that he's just worried about abilities spelling over spilling over. I think it's in a nice place. Like again, if you look at the classes that aren't pure support and they have support classes, it's usually like a couple. So what it ends up happening is if you don't have an enchanter, you're not going to be able to fill the enchanter role, but you can have a few people that can like slow mobs or a few people that can do things. So you're not going to be as effective and it's going to take away from like, if I'm a rogue and I have to worry about CCing stuff, that's going to take a lot of DPS away from the group. So I think that the way it's built right now is that people need to um, people need to see that if if the non peer support classes need to support, there's going to be a lot of sacrifice. Whereas the peer support classes, that's what they're there for. So everyone else will be able to fully focus on their main role, which you know is DPS, tanking, healing, whatever it is. Yeah. 
So let's bring Drak yeah. in. Um, anything else before I bring him in? Good. Nope. I was just going to say the support should be kind of the one that nobody notices, but they miss when they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to bring Drak <laughs> in. Drak, you're coming in right now. Drak, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So what are your feelings on support? Are you going to be playing a support track? Um, I'm considering it. Uh, I think right now summoner is leading the pack, but I was also thinking about a necro. Okay. Um, but I have some different, actually I have some, maybe, maybe even a question because maybe I, I misread it wrong, but, uh, and I didn't catch the beginning. So maybe we already talked about this, sure. but I thought that the quaternity in Pantheon was tanking, healing, crowd control, and DPS. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right. Um, I think that in the past it was called support, so that's why you'll hear the word support used a lot, like peer support versus a um, couple support abilities. But yeah, I mean, when I think of crowd control, I think of support. But you're right, yeah, that's that's kind of where they're going, and then everybody will have little pieces of support, but a lot of support will be able to come from these crowd control support classes because there's only so much. If, if your if your class is built around crowd control. That's not a lot of spells, right? So your your rest of your spell book is going to be a lot of support. Interesting, because I always thought of support as the healing classes, not the crowd control classes. That's how I always thought of support. Yeah, it's interesting because there's there's nothing wrong with thinking about it that way. And Micah, you can jump in on that too. There's definitely nothing wrong with thinking about a support being healer. Um, but I think that over time, my opinion is that healer has become its own thing. Um, and yeah, and, and even like you said, enchanters, a CC class and with utility, and they can also be support. Um, it's more of what their spell book is rounded out with. Like healing is its own thing. Healers are always going to have a spot. Um, so I don't consider them support like I used to in the past. I consider them more being, you know, healers, right? Now, I would consider if a shaman came in and they had a, a big set of debuffing abilities and then they had off heals, and actually uh, Marks just said it in chat, you could throw some off heals, but your main thing is going to be like manipulating the battlefield, and that's what I see as support or crowd control. And maybe that's just changing the words crowd control to the modern era, that crowd control also means buffing, debuffing, not just keeping things in its track. And I think a lot of times crowd control was always based off of movement when I'd heard that in the past and the way games designed, it was around movement when you were crowd controlling. But if you want to start, maybe that's something we need to rethink is that crowd control. Maybe it also means buffing and debuffing. I don't know. Right. And maybe that's just a question that we need to nail Joppa down on, right? Is when you say support, do you mean crowd control or is, are those two interchangeable or, is, or do you mean two different things? Like what, what do you mean when you say support and what do you mean when you say crowd control and are the three classes necro bard and enchanter are they support or are they crowd control or are they both it's weird because i just can't see personally a necromancer filling the role of a bard or enchanter i just can't no i don't know the abilities but i just I, it's hard for me to envision that it's really hard I really I was thinking about it and like I had I had some ideas on that of like so if you're the necro then you could spawn lots of little pets that would engage or undead pets that would engage the monsters right that would crowd control them but and and maybe they would die really fast but they would keep popping back up and keep engaging the monster um, or you could have like uh, bones that come out of the ground and root them to the ground or something like that yeah. uh, I just think it'd be a uh, pretty fascinating way to do that. Zombie yeah. hounds that come out of the ground. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. <laughs> yeah, the it, it's it's actually that is a really interesting conversation, Drac, and it's really a way to break this down because I'm starting to think about what you're saying. And it's weird to me because I see this role, you know, and I think here's why I call it support, right? Because the Trinity is healer tank DPS. So if we if we did exactly what we're accustomed to in a lot of the more modern games, the five man group is going to be, you know, usually one healer and tank and then three DPS. And maybe one of those DPS can also pull or, or off tank for a small period of time or toss extra heals. It really just depends on your group makeup. But that's how it's always kind of been. Now we have this six spot and this six spot is almost like thinking about somebody controlling, sitting back, 
buffing, debuffing, kind of just said that. And that's what's interesting because when you think of what you just said, like, isn't it crowd control? Do, does a bard seem like it's going to be crowd control? Because a bard to me is singing in the background and buffing their group. An enchanter and a shaman are debuffing the things we're fighting. So it's an interesting way because I think of a bard, you could say that that's crowd control, but you're not, you're, you're supporting, you're, you're supporting everybody by making them better. I think the big thing in Pantheon is the difference between the term utility and support. And that is confusing right now. Like utility and support are interesting dynamics because utility should be something like I'm throwing a rope down. I'm summoning a boat. I'm making a bridge of vines. But I think that it's weird because the way the classes are defined, sometimes maybe classes, everybody has support in their name. Every single class says support, which is interesting to me. Um, so what's the difference between classes that have support because they have a couple support abilities versus a class that's built all around it? Yeah, I, I don't really know. And that, and that's, you know, like I said, maybe something we need to, to nail down on and nail Joppa down on of like, what, what exactly does that mean? Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I do not like um, charm the way it was in EQ. I think we've come a long way since then. <laughs> Yeah, and I yeah. think that that we should have that we should have learned lessons from then. Um, I think you, you know you could do charm, but to drag a mob from fight to fight to fight and buff it and keep it with you the entire time with with its original power is broken. Um, it just it just is, and it ruins the game because um, you know we you'd have two enchanters in a group and you could pull the whole zone and kill everything because uh, the the spiders in uh, in the crystal caverns. Um, and they, they would wreck everything, um, the, the mobs that were 10 levels higher than them. And you can pull the whole zone with two enchanters. And it was just, it was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah I agree. Awesome. Well, anything you want to throw up on the whiteboard that's not there? You've highlighted a few. You've highlighted the concern about charm. You've talked about, you know, what what is the difference? That's actually a pretty important question. Um, anything you wanted to throw up on the board before you jump out? Uh, no, I think everybody took all the good stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I just uh, just uh, defining the role, or what's the difference between support and crowd control, or are is is the fourth uh, part of the quaternity is it support or is it crowd control? That's actually interesting. I can't spell quadrant. I don't see that. How do you even spell quadrant? And that might just be from my experience in eleven. But I don't see them as the same thing. You don't. I do. Oh, you do. You do. Okay. I see support and crowd control as being the same thing. Like, like when he, like when you're saying that healers have support abilities and everything, I always see like with the buffs, I always see that as just the standard part of the standard healer toolkit. Um, okay. But like with support, I see them as the ones who support the party by buffs um, and also by being able to control the like I said before, bring order to the chaos, like control the flow of the, um, the battles, like keep the ads or whatever off to the side, debuff stuff. To me, that's all support because you're not a DPS because you're not contributing to your damage. You're not a healer because you're not healing. You're not a tank, but you're supporting everybody else by everything that you can do by, by controlling the battlefield. So that's how I also support. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, awesome, Drac. Thank you for hanging on and jumping in with us tonight. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. And we are going to wrap it up there. We're an hour and a half. So thank you guys again. You guys can make any topic fun to talk about. I'll tell you, we always said we were going to do an hour. And if we can get to that extra half hour, that's phenomenal. And I think we've done it every week, if not gone longer, because the community, you guys are incredible. The chat's been lighting up. Um, Bronson, I see you. I want to I want to make sure, Bronson, I understand what you meant by Magic Johnson. Distribute the ball. He's kind of like LeBron, man. He, LeBron's the new Magic Johnson. We'll start a whole other debate. But yeah, distribute the ball. Make everyone around them better. I got you, bro. I got you. Um, so yeah, it's it's an interesting topic. I think that that is a, an important question to ask. Maybe we'll toss that over to Joppa. Like, hey, quick question for you, Joppa. Could you answer this? Um, you know, define the difference between every class having support and then some having CC, where CC, I mean, the, the biggest thing that, I always think about the CC thing is like, if your whole job is crowd control, how many abilities would you have? Four? Okay, I can mess stuff, I can root stuff, I can erase their hate. 
and I can make them our friends. What's the rest of your skill set? It would just be, you know, to me, the rest matter too. The buffs, the um, the mana distribution, the debuffs, like those to me are what, when I think of a support role, those are almost as important as holding mobs in place. Because if you have a great puller, then you're not going to, CC is not going to be as important for an enchanter or a bard. But buffing everybody is going to be really important. Slowing the enemies in front of you, that's going to be really important. So if your group is has a really good puller, then the CC side of it isn't as important to me as what else they bring to the table. So it's, it's really, that's a really interesting debate. It's funny that we got to that right at the end. Cause now my mind is like spinning <laughs> and I, I do want to send that off to Joppa and see what he says. So. Uh, well, Micah, thank you for joining us again tonight. I think this is your third or fourth time. Co-hosting. Something like that. He was also the first one to come on camera and us figure that all out, which was interesting. Went well tonight. No freezing tonight. So it went well. Yeah, my camera actually works. Last time I had to cut out, I think, halfway through my camera. Yeah, you were just stuck. Yeah. Yeah. But um, thank you guys so much um, to everybody who came in, to those that were contributing in chat. And I know there's a couple of people we weren't able to get to in the green room, but I do appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Um, very excited. Next week will be a uh, dev recap, and we will have a Pantheon Plus Rewind episode two out this Sunday. So we're trying to do a lot more. We're expanding the team. There'll be a lot more offerings. I didn't even, Mike, I didn't even get to talk about Rogue in D&D Online and how much support that class was. I guess it's for another day. We'll have to do a stream just about Rogues. It should be pretty fun. So um, everybody, thank you very much for coming out. Really do appreciate it. Um, hope everybody has a great night, and we'll see you next week on Pantheon Plus U. Thank <sighs> you.